Your team sucks. Hey, it happens. We can't draft a winner every year. Maybe things didn't even go wrong in the draft. Maybe you loved your team before the season actually started. Maybe you were in first place after one week. But somehow or another, something went wrong and now you're sitting near the bottom of the standings or you're just kind of stuck in the middle and you don't know how you're gonna catch up to those teams that are way ahead. Well, let's first break down what might have gone wrong and what you can do to fix it. Because remember, it's still a long season. If you love watching baseball and playing fantasy baseball, you probably love playing MLB The Show on PlayStation, Xbox, or Switch. Well, the best place to get those stubs without paying full price is MMOAH.com. On top of their already discounted price, you get an extra 5% off by using code ENDGAME. You can build your perfect Diamond Dynasty even faster by clicking the link in the description below and using our promo code. Your fantasy baseball team might suck if your stars are not playing like stars. Julio Rodriguez, Corbin Carroll, Matt Olson, those are hitters that were all consensus top 20 draft picks, first or second rounders at the latest, and they definitely don't look like stars, more like white dwarfs, if you know what I mean. Or maybe you had the misfortune of choosing Spencer Strider early on, and now you're without Spencer Strider the rest of this season. You know what they say, you can't win the draft in the first round, but you could lose it. Look, one player shouldn't make all the difference, but yeah, it definitely hurts when the guy you expect to be your best player is playing far from it. Julio Rodriguez and Corbin Carroll have combined for three home runs. Matt Olson, who led the NL with 54 home runs last year, has a total of three himself so far, and he's hitting 198. Julio Rodriguez, barely league average at 255. Corbin Carroll, far below league average at 211. Sure, those guys are still in your bases, but that's it. And Olsen's not even doing that. He's not really producing in any way. So are these guys going to turn it around? Well, you better hope so, but I will say I think it will happen. I'm going to talk a little bit later about why you might also be losing because it's too early to push the panic button on guys this good. Now, if your best players aren't performing up to snuff so far, that's okay because that's what the waiver wire is for. But reason number two your fantasy team might suck is because you made the wrong waiver claims. It's easy to get excited by the hot new thing, the prospects, the rookies, the names we don't know about, but sometimes those boring veterans are the best to pick up. Look, just so far this year, we've gotten tremendous value out of players like Jose Caballero in Tampa Bay. He's stolen 14 bases already, and he's hitting for average. Jake Cronenworth in San Diego, Kind of an afterthought. A lot of people just plucked him off the waiver wire, and he's got 25 RBI so far. And then his counterpart, Yerkson Profar, wasn't even necessarily slated to be on the opening day roster, and he's now hitting leadoff for that team. He's got 27 RBIs, and he's betting 338. Bryce Terang wasn't sure to be a starter in Milwaukee. Well, he's also got 14 steals and is hitting above 300. Now, with all those injuries at catcher now, so hard to find someone good offensively, unless you picked up Ryan Jeffers and you're very happy with his totals. It doesn't always have to be a young player, some new addition to a team. Sometimes just the same old players that have been there and done that can do the job. You have to look at how they're performing once the year starts. And it's so important to pick the right pitcher, especially with so many injuries in rotations already. So if you picked up guys like Jordan Hicks, Javier Assad, Ron Her Suarez, Jack Flaherty, Brady Singer, Tanner Houck, or Cutter Crawford, you've got an ace that you got for free and could replace one of your injured players or just add to your rotation. Every year we see guys off the waiver wire who wind up being so valuable in the starting pitching range. Just have to find the right ones. But then, of course, the rookies, they do matter. Looks is why I always say it's worth sashing them. They won't all pan out, but if you pick the right one, man, are you happy. And so far, we'll talk about a guy like Jared Jones in Pittsburgh. His teammate, who's about to debut in Paul Skeens, will probably be a stud the rest of the season. And then on offense, we got Andy Pajes for the Dodgers. Colton Kowser so far has been a big help to fancy teams in Baltimore. And I'm sure there'll be at least a couple other Orioles rookies that will help before the season's over. It's impossible to pick the right waiver wire move every single time, every single week, but you've got to stay active. You always have to search for that upside because when you nail a pick, it is definitely worth it. But there's a flip side to that, and that's reason number three your fancy team might suck. Maybe you overreacted way too early in the season. 
So I just said, yes, you've got to be active. Yes, you got to be aggressive for certain players, but you don't want to overreact and make the wrong move. You do not want to waste a high amount of fab or your top waiver claim on guys who are just a flash in the pan or just wind up being worthless in a week or two. How about that hot new closer who is no longer closing after a couple weeks like Abner Uribe, Milwaukee? How about that starting pitcher from overseas who looks like he's reworked after years away from the majors? Two great starts. And then he's not in the rotation anymore, like Albert Suarez in Baltimore. Or that young pitcher in a bad team who has strung together several good starts and looks like he's ready to break out until he then goes back to being bad, like Bailey Falter in Pittsburgh. And then for every Colton Kowser, there's a Jackson Holiday or Heston Kierstad who looks like the next big thing and then actually hurts your fantasy stats before getting sent back down or just sitting on the bench and doing nothing. That includes guys like Addison Barger, Jordan Beck, and countless other rookies who were up for about a week or two just to get sent back down or relegated to the bench. I'm guilty of doing a lot of these things, picking up players that didn't pan out, and it's okay. But again, you don't want to go too crazy too early in the season. Save some of your fab for the middle of the end of the season. Don't go after every rookie that gets called up. Don't go after every guy who has one good week, you have to be selective. And then talk about overreaction. I really hope that nobody here did a rage drop on a stud or an ace pitcher after a couple of bad starts. Yeah, I'm talking about guys like Kevin Gaussman, Max Fried, and then even Bailey Ober after one bad start was dropped in a lot of leagues and since that time has gone on to put a two and a half ERA over his last several starts. Guys, You cannot look into April stats and decide, yeah, this is what this player is going to do for the next six months. It is a long season. It's all about the ebb and the flow, the ups and the downs. Sometimes you have to ride out the low spots and then wait for the high times, which leads me to my next point. Your fantasy team might suck because you aren't even trying to be active in the trade market. The name of the game is to buy low and to sell high. And both are equally important. When you have a player who does get off to a fast start, take advantage if you aren't convinced that player is going to keep it going. I know it's so hard to do when you have a player who's hitting home runs, who's you know pitching lights out. You don't want to move on from that guy. You want to enjoy it. And you want to take advantage of those stats. Maybe they do break out over the course of the season. But sometimes there are some moves that are just too obvious. I'll just point out a couple that, again, really, how could we not see this coming Paul Blackburn coming back down to earth after a few good starts, that seemed too obvious. And then I hate to say it, but Mike Trout getting injured was just a matter of time. If you did have Mike Trout, I really hope that you sold him. Buying low is a little trickier because we aren't sure that all these players are going to come around. You have to be selective here as well. This is why I talk about which players are worth buying low every single week. And the fifth and final reason why your fantasy team might still suck is because you just aren't paying attention. Look, this is not fantasy football where you can check in once a week to set your lineup and then maybe check the injury report before Sunday. This is a daily game, and even if your league is a weekly head-to-head league or you're only allowed weekly lineup moves and weekly waivers, you have to check more often than once a week because things change every day in baseball. Injuries happen. Call-ups happen. Performances can shift and move all the time. You've got to pay attention. I'm not saying you have to read every box score of every game every day like I do, but you've got to at least pay attention to how things are changing. There's so many resources out there where you can see how these adjustments are happening. Keep at least in touch with some new sources. And of course, you should keep it locked here on the Fancy Endgame to keep you informed of the most important actions you need to take to make sure that you are always staying on top of things. Did I mention that this is a great time to buy low on some studs who are underachieving? It's still early, there's plenty of season left. If you don't know who to go after, well, here's my latest buy low video.